Public Accounts Committee has found that YTL Communications and Grand Burhat had been enjoying discounted rents on the Telco Tower sites at 2,117 government schools that had been a part of its One Bessari Net project. YTL Coms is 60% owned by listed YTL Power International Burhat. PSC found that YTL Coms had been paying 1,000 ringgit per site per year, or just over 80 ringgit per month, which works out to 2.12 million ringgit per annum. However, the Department of Director General of Lands and Mines or JKPDG notes that the fair rental for each site should be 1,200 ringgit every month, which works out to be close to 30 million ringgit per year. The PSC report revealed that this stock difference was due to the intervention by the Ministry of Education on behalf of YTL Coms. JKPDG said that the revision was based on YTL Com's concession agreement, which stated that the government should prepare the site. Ultimately, the PAC recommended that the Auditor General conduct an effectiveness study on the one Bistari net on all the issues it raised. DG.com Berhad's wholly owned unit, DG Telecommunications and Dren Berhad, has accepted MCMC's offer in respect to the spectrum assignments for 2 times 5 MHz of 900 MHz and 2 times 20 MHz for 1800 MHz spectrum bands for a period of 15 years. The telco company says the payment for the one time fee component of close to 600 million ringgit was made within the deadline set by MCMC. DG say that the fee would be funded mainly through its existing borrowing facilities and to maintain healthy net debt to EBITDA ratio of below one times. DG said earlier that the allocation and tenure of these bands would allow better investment planning and optimal network design. The Housing Ministry says it will submit a paper to National Housing Department to standardise land costs and quota for low-cost housing in all the states. Deputy Minister for Urban Wellbeing, Housing and Local Government Dato Halima Mohamad Sadiq says housing prices could be lowered if certain issues are dealt with, such as land costs charged by the state government, as it makes up some three quarters of the cost for a housing project. As such, it could prove a hindrance to the federal government in developing affordable homes. Halima explains that although all states concur that the price range for affordable homes should be from 300,000 ringgit and below, the quota for low-cost units, which are priced between 42,000 ringgit and 200,000 ringgit, still varies between states. The Minister of Finance has granted a commercial bank license to China Construction Bank Berhad, a wholly owned unit of Mammoth China Construction Bank Corp Limited. It had been reported in August that the second largest banking group in China had applied for a banking license and was waiting for the green light. Bank Negara Malaysia said that the license was granted based on the prudential strength and ability of China Construction Bank to bring in propositions that are in the best interest of Malaysia. The central bank adds that CCB Malaysia's focus in infrastructure project financing will add value towards Malaysia's transformation into a high-income nation and will help to further strengthen the economic and financial linkages between China and Malaysia. George Ken Berhad has received a 277.2 million ringgit contract from Jabatan Kerja Raya Malaysia to build a 150-bed hospital. The contract is due to start on November 24th and is due to be completed in four years. The hospital will be built on a 17-acre site facing the main trunk road between Tanjung Karang and Kuala Selangor. The works include a medical and ward block, 30 units of houseman's quarters, a 50-pack child nursery centre and a visitor gallery among others. This is the third hospital the group is building on a turnkey basis for the Ministry of Health. George Ken also says that it is not resting on its laurels and will continue to bid for jobs. <laughs>